Hi, I am Drake Hampton, and this is a presentation of my research on cellular mechanisms of beta cell death and type 1 diabetes. I would like to give a huge thank you to both Dr. Nikki Farnsworth and Jillian Collins for helping me conduct this research. I am very grateful for all the support and hope they have given me, and I would not have been able to do it without them. To start off, let's talk about the anatomy of the pancreas. The pancreas sits behind the stomach, just below the liver and the gallbladder, and above the intestines. The pancreas is made up of small clusters of cells called the islets of Langerhans. Inside the islets of Langerhans, there are three kinds of cells. There are alpha cells, beta cells, and delta cells. Alpha cells are responsible for making glucagon, beta cells are responsible for making insulin, and delta cells are responsible for making other peptides. The beta cells are the only cells in the body that produce insulin, and insulin is the hormone which regulates blood sugar throughout the body. This is what normal islet function in the body looks like. Food is broken down into glucose, glucose enters the bloodstream, and the pancreas secretes insulin in response to high glucose. The insulin allows glucose to be absorbed by liver and muscle to be stored or used for energy production. As glucose is absorbed, blood sugar decreases, which provides a negative feedback to the beta cells, keeping blood sugar levels normal. So, what is type 1 diabetes? Diabetes refers to the inability of the body to regulate blood glucose levels. There are two types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. Type 2 is not autoimmune, and the beta cells in the pancreas are not always destroyed. Type 1 diabetes is different from type 2 in that it is an autoimmune disease, meaning the patient's immune system attacks their own body. This occurs by islet infiltrating immune cells that release pro-inflammatory cytokines in the islets. These pro-inflammatory cytokines induce beta cell death, although the mechanism is not well understood. When the insulin producing beta cells die, there is no longer insulin excreted into the bloodstream because the beta cells are the only insulin producing cells and the body no longer has a means to regulate blood sugar. At full disease progression, all type 1 diabetes patients are fully insulin dependent, meaning that no insulin is produced by their beta cells. The reason that it is important to investigate mechanisms of beta cell death in type 1 diabetes is because current treatments for type 1 are poor and a better understanding of the mechanisms of type 1 diabetes could create better therapies. Going back to the flow chart from the previous slide, when type 1 diabetes occurs, insulin is only received via pump or injection site since all of the beta cells are dead. Additionally, there is no negative feedback which makes controlling blood sugar levels much less efficient. To begin talking about the mechanism of beta cell death, we will first talk about the physiology of beta cells. Beta cells are linked by gap junction proteins called connexins. A beta cell specific connexin is connexin 36. Connexin 36 physically and electrically couples beta cells and coordinates calcium ion intake. Calcium ion intake causes insulin to be secreted from the beta cell. The gap junction coupling coordinates the calcium ion influx as well as insulin secretion. Because beta cells are electrically coupled by connexin 36, calcium ion intake is synchronized across the entire islet, which provides a coordinated pulsatile release of insulin, which can be, see, which can be seen in figure B right here. Connexin 36 is also shown in figure A, linking the two beta cells right here. We can also see in the bottom of figure B right here that when no connexin 36 is present, while there still might be some pulsatility, there is no coordination of beta cells. So the loss of the connexin 36 coupling alters insulin secretion and disrupts islet dynamics and is similar to that which is observed during prediabetes. <clears throat> it is known that pro-inflammatory cytokines are the mediators of beta cell death. 
In both the figures shown, islets were isolated from humans and mice and were treated with cytokines outside of the body, using the cytokine cocktail listed. These cytokines are known to play a role in beta cell death in type 1 diabetes and are tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin 1 beta, and interferon gamma. As shown in these two figures, cytokines induce a dose-dependent decrease in connexin-36 coupling in both mouse and human islets. It is also known that pro-inflammatory cytokines in the beta cells activate protein kinase delta, or PKC delta. A protein kinase is a signaling molecule in the cell. Pro-inflammatory cytokine-induced beta cell death is mediated by PKC delta, which also causes changes in calcium ion signaling and insulin secretion by inhibition of connexin 36. This figure on the right shows untreated uh, humans or human islets outside of the body in the black and treated human islets which have been treated with delta V1-1, which is a PKC delta inhibitor. What can be seen from this figure is that there is beta cell protection with delta V1-1 when the islet is exposed to the cytokine cocktail. So my hypothesis is that in type one diabetic pancreatic islets with significant amounts of cell death, Levels of connexin 36 are decreased and levels of PKC delta are increased compared to healthy controls. So in this figure, there is the infiltrating immune cell and then the pro-inflammatory cytokines, which activate PKC delta. And PKC delta causes the connexin 36 gap junctions to disappear, as well as the cell to die. To test my hypothesis, I used immunohistochemistry staining on slices of pancreatic tissue from deceased human donors, which were given to us by NPOD, which stands for Network for Pancreatic Organ Donors with Diabetes. The slices of pancreatic tissue were fixed in paraffin to preserve the tissue, and I used fluorescently labeled antibodies targeted to insulin, connexin 36, and PKC delta as well as DAPI, which is a nuclear stain. And DAPI shows where the cells are, which is this in the top right corner. This is connexin 36 in the green, which is the top left corner. This is insulin in the bottom right corner, which is the red. And then zoomed in on this square with all three of these channels merged is an image of insulin, connexin 36, and DAPI all together. From the images in the previous slide, I used MATLAB and ImageJ to extract quantitative data from the images. Uh, using MATLAB and ImageJ, I populated arrays with pixel intensities for each wavelength for each different fluorescent label. And then I used MATLAB to remove the background staining and determine areas of significant antibody attachment and then I used the um, insulin stain to determine which cells were insulin positive. And then I examined the concentrations of PKC delta and connexin 36 around the insulin positive cells. The insulin was primarily used to help identify beta cells. This is an example of DAPI and connexin 36 together. And I used the insulin stain to determine where the insulin positive cells were. And then I put the images into MATLAB and used my MATLAB code to determine uh, where there was overlap between insulin and connexin 36 which is shown here. What I've done so far is I have verified connexin 36, insulin, and PKC delta antibodies for immunohistochemistry staining.
and I've also developed a MATLAB code which can be used to process Connection 36 and PKC Delta and, emulet, and insulin images. Um, future directions that I would like to take would be tunnel staining to identify areas of cell death and also to compare the results of tunnel staining with areas also containing PKC Delta and Connection 36. My end goal is to compare levels of Connection 36 and PKC Delta and insulin positive cells at the same time, as well as incorporating tunnel staining. Thank you for listening to my presentation, and I would like to give a big thanks to my lab group. Uh, this is Dr. Farnsworth. This is Jill. This is Chelsea. This is Kiefer. This is Mark, and this is Meg. Thank you.